Hey everybody, welcome to uh, another live stream. The plan for today is to go through some packet tracer labs together. I'll talk through what I'm configuring, the implications of what I'm configuring, how to prove what I'm configuring is working as I mean for it to work. And uh, if there's any Q&A that want, that's going to happen while we're doing that, I definitely throw that stuff in the chat. If you're joining us in the recording, uh, there's going to be timestamps in the description. So feel free to check those out to jump to where you want to go. Otherwise, the plan for today is to work through some labs together. So if you're in the chat, hello, welcome, Sashi, Pluey, and the few folks I've already been chatting with, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to be running through some packet tracer labs. Uh, this could actually become a series. So if there's interest in this type of content, I might continue to do more and more labs together on a live stream. Um, I'm going to start with packet tracer labs just because they're very easy to uh, acquire and pass around. But in the future, if there's interest, uh, I'd be happy to start working through Genus 3 or EVNG Labs or, uh, or something along those lines. Uh, that said, I'll also throw out a quick apology. I'm just getting over a bit of a head cold, so if I sound all nasally, my apologies. Um, cool. Okay, I guess we can get right into it. So uh, just a few things to keep in mind about what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so the labs we're going to work through today uh, are courtesy of Keith Barker. So if you guys are, are unfamiliar with Keith Barker, uh, he's a phenomenal Cisco instructor. He's been teaching Cisco uh, technologies for, uh, I mean, you'd have to ask him, 15 to 20 years or so. Um, his, his content is actually some of the content that I used to study for CCNA way back when I first was trying to learn all this. So he's been an instructor for a very long time, and I've learned a ton from him. Um, he also has a YouTube channel with a ton of good content, and I'll definitely be sharing some links of his stuff. Now, one of the things he has, let me get my screen share going. Cool. So this is his website, thekeithbarker.com. Definitely go and check it out when you get a chance. Uh, he has this download section, which will sh scroll you down to this section of free downloads. And in this section, he has a bunch of free packet tracer labs that you can download and study and work your way through uh, if you're studying for the CCNA or trying to understand uh, more about networking, Cisco networking, routers and switches and the like. Today, this is the lab that we're going to be working through together. Now, you're welcome to download this lab right now and work through it with me. Or if you want to download it right now and pause the live stream, or if you're watching this in the recording and try and work through it yourself, and then come back and see how I go through it, that's also an option you have right there. Either way, that is how to get the lab that we are doing today and how to get a bunch of cool resources from Keith uh, from Keith's site. Again, that site is thekeithbarker.com. Um, cool. Oh, a couple more things I do want to share. Keith Barker also has uh, a couple playlists that I want to share with you guys. One of them is where he goes through a bunch of his own labs. So if there's other labs that you're doing of his that you're interested in and want to see kind of the master at work, if you will, uh, definitely check out his playlist and if i can find there it is right there so this is this is his playlist where he, oops i don't want that i want the full playlist there it is so this is his playlist where he goes through all the labs that we'll probably be working through together over the next few weeks so if you want to see his take on it this is where you would check it out the specific one we are doing today is that oops is this guy right here oh i didn't mean to start that again if you have logged out Cool. So feel free to check that out if you want to see his take on doing this same lab. But he has one of these for every single one of the labs that he has uh, available at his website. So definitely check that out. It's a phenomenal resource. Um, he also has a, uh, where is it, a, uh, a C CCNA master playlist right here. Uh, and this has a ton of useful content if you're trying to study CCNA. A lot of these are some of his live stream teaching lectures. A lot of these are actually videos he's created. Uh, but it's a great place to search if there's a particular concept in the CCNA that you're trying to understand, definitely check this video playlist out. Um, once the live stream ends, I'll make sure there are links to both of these in the description. With that said, we can get right into it. So just to show you that I'm doing, let me actually check in with the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, cool. Yeah, glad glad, glad you learned some stuff, Simon. I'm super excited to, uh, to have been able to helpful. Uh, I agree, Sashi, GNS3 is better, but Packet Tracer is, is just so simple. 
favorite concepts, ARP concepts, ping concepts, awesome. We'll be working through all that. This The lab we're doing today doesn't have too much to do with routers, so we're not going to do too much in the in the Layer 3 world. Uh, but we are definitely, next week I have something planned that is that is going to involve routers as well. For sure, Carlos, happy to do it. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and download the lab that we're going to do today. And I'm going to go through a you know something that I literally I just downloaded. So in most of the labs from Keith, he'll include uh, you know a little image. So this is this is this is Keith's you know that's Keith if you haven't seen him before, uh, and then some instructions. Uh, and these are going to be the lab instructions that we're going to work through together. And I'm going to put that right here, and then obviously the actual packet tracer lab right here. Now, what we're not going to be covering in this lesson is how to install and download Packet Tracer. There's a bunch of other videos from other people that are more familiar with Packet Tracer, uh, so feel free to look that up. Packet Tracer is a lab um, lab emulation tool. Sorry, simulation tool, meaning it has a bunch of devices like routers and switches that uh, are going to uh, you can you know connect and 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 work with and log in that all simulate the way real routers and switches work. Now, I think that's important to mention is that we're probably going to run into, or if you're using Packet Tracer outside, you'll probably run into instances where the device doesn't act the way you think it was supposed to act, or the way it doesn't act exactly the way a real device is going to ask, act. That's because this is a uh, lab simulator, so it's simulating, it's pretending to be routers and switches, uh, but not actually running true Cisco router and switch code. Uh, that's the difference between something like Packet Tracer and GNS3 and EVNG or... Um, Cisco Moduling, Moduling Labs, which is the, the Verl substitute, if you will. Uh, so anyways, we're going to be doing Packet Tracer. And uh, yeah, so this is the lab that we are going to work through. And I guess we'll just get right into it. So let me put this in a place so we can see it nice and easy. Cool. So here is the lab tasks that we're going to be going through down here. And then this is the actual lab topology. So our lab topology has uh, these three uh, the, the, this icon is a multi-layer switch, but I believe in this particular lab, they're just configured as layer two switches. An access point, theoretically, this is where our laptop is going to connect in via Wi-Fi, and then obviously the server. Um, the tasks for the lab, the objective for the lab, is to get the laptop to open up a web page on the server. So this right here is likely the server's IP address, and so we can double click on that, so we'll open up the server. Let's get this guy out of the way. <clears throat> this is kind of the standard interface when you're looking at devices. In Packet Tracer, you can look at the different modules that are installed. Most of that isn't particularly uh, useful for servers. But down in the config, if we go down to settings, this is the display name of the server. You see that echoed right there. The server is acquiring uh, a gateway from a static address, meaning you would actually type something in. But interesting, where is it? Interestingly enough, oh, that's a different map. Okay, cool. Since there's no routers on this picture, we don't have a default gateway, so obviously there's nothing going to be here. If I go to interfaces, you'll see this is the IP address of the server, and it does actually match up to what the um, lab instructions provide. Now, I uh, I always end up forgetting these IP addresses, so I'm going to actually add this as a note in Packet Tracer, just so that I can refer to it easily again in the future. Cool. So if we jumped onto the laptop and kind of looked at the same thing. Sweet. The first thing we run into is that the laptop isn't currently powered on. And obviously it's not going to be able to do any networking unless it's actually turned on. And uh, it's not always easy to tell. It's not always obvious where the power button is for the various devices in, in, in Cisco. Looks like for the server it would be right here, but that guy's already powered on. For the laptop, it's this guy right here. If I click that guy, you see the light turn green. Now that's powered on. Now I, you can actually see the uh, little Wi-Fi signal connected down over there. Cool. So if we go to interfaces, you'll see that it's trying to get an IP address <coughs> via DHCP um, at the moment. And this is the IP address it pulled down. Uh, now this is a special address, the 169254 address. The 169254 address is known as the APIPA address. Anytime you see an address that starts with 169254, that's an indication that DHCP failed. The way it works is this laptop tried to acquire an address via DHCP, but for whatever reason was unable to, and so it automatically picked an address in the 169254 range. The idea behind this, and so far as like the, the concept, is that 
Um, if you can't connect with the DHCP server or if your DHCP server fails, at the very least, you can pick an address randomly from this range and connect with the other peers on your network. This is sort of what IPv6 does with, um, with Slack, but that's a whole different discussion we'll get into another time. Cool. So that's the laptop and the server, but obviously we're probably most convinced, rather concerned with the switches. So let's get into some switches. <clears throat> In any case, real quick, I'll mention, since the laptop wasn't able to get a DHCP server, that tells us we don't have, we don't have connectivity from this laptop through this topology to the server. So something's wrong, and that's what we're going to try and figure out uh, together. Awesome. So the instructions indicate that we have to use VLAN 10. So one thing we're going to want to make sure is that VLAN 10 has a uh, you know, layer 2 path all the way through this topology. Um, Cool, that's the IP addresses. So let's actually make sure that the DHCP server is running. So if you go to services on the server box of, of the server, uh, and then you can click on the different services that that service are running. So it's running a web page, there's HTTP, there's DHCP. Uh, it looks like it is configured to be given out an address. Yeah, in, cool, in the 10.67.83.32 slash 27 network. So that's in place. Uh, cool. So Kit Kithanelaine asks a question in the chat. It is not exclusive to Windows. Uh, actually, almost almost any client will do this. So servers typically won't do this. Routers may not do this as well. But any client type OS will do this. So like Mac OS will do this. Linux OS will do it. The you know Ubuntu, the client versions, not necessarily the the server versions. <coughs> cool. So we won't have to worry about DHCP in this lab. All we it looks like all we really have to do is make sure that VLAN 10 can get from this server all the way to this laptop. So let's jump on this first switch over here and take a look at the configuration. Cool. So almost any time you log into a switch, uh, actually, I, I had an old coworker. He would call this the 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 Cisco switch trifecta commands. Essentially, there's three commands you're going to run on pretty much every single switch you ever log into once you get to the real world. Uh, and it's probably not a bad idea to run those things in labs as well. Those three commands are show CDP neighbor to kind of see where you're at, show in status to see what interfaces are connected or not connected on the switch, uh, and then show VLAN brief to see what sort of VLAN information the switch is particularly uh, is, is configured with, if you will. So if we do, if you start with so, show CDP neighbor, we could tell that switch three has a neighbor of switch two. And if we look at the configuration, that, that's, I mean, we can see that mimicked in the configuration as well. So we know there's a path between switch two and switch three where they're seeing each other on the wire. Uh, now, servers don't typically participate in CDP. That's why they don't see uh, on the other side over here. The other command I said, show in status. This is going to tell us what is connected on this switch. Uh, we'll see that nothing is connected on this switch except for FA01 and FA02. So we only have two interfaces on the switch and both of them are connected. One of them presumably, actually, if you look at the labels and packet tracer, FA01 and actually the output of so show CDP neighbor above it confirms that switch two is plugged in FA01. So that guy is connected to switch two. And this guy is connected to this, presumably, since the only other thing that's connected on this topology is the server, we can assume that FAO2 is where the server is plugged into. Now, of course, Packet Tracer shows this to us, right where my arrow is right there, but it's good to be able to verify this stuff yourself because when you get to the real world or when you get to a, an exam, you might not have all these pretty labels that you can work through or look off of or uh, gain, gain information from. So if you can gain all your information from the switch itself, you'll be positioning yourself for success in the future. Cool. <clears throat> Cool. Now, initially, we, we can see a problem, right? Because we're supposed to be using VLAN 10 for our transport all the way across between the server and the laptop. But the port that our switch, sorry, that our server is connected to is currently configured in VLAN 1. So right there is, is the first kind of problem that we've, we've run through. Now, real quick, I want to do the, the last of the Cisco trifecta commands show VLAN brief. It does tell us that VLAN 10 is configured and that FAO2 is in VLAN 10. Cool. 
Now, this is kind of interesting because this command, show VLAN brief, is actually only showing you access ports. So if I did a show in trunk to see what trunk ports, cool, and then two, oh yeah, that's fine. Oh, I had that switched around. <laughs> cool. So already we run into our first, uh, this is why it's important to, to uh, verify this stuff. So our server is plugged into FA02 and our server is correctly configured as an access port in VLAN 10. That's what this is telling us right here. And I'll show you a couple other ways you can verify that. FA01 is indeed connected, but this is showing you the access port VLAN, which is VLAN 1. However, FA01 is not an access port. If we go down to where we did show in trunk, we can see that FA01 is actually a trunk port. So this access port configuration is sort of irrelevant because the port is not an access port. So, cool. So FA01 is configured as a trunk. So every, every VLAN and show VLAN brief is gonna be passing out that trunk. So we know FA0, we know VLAN 10 is coming out FA01, and we know FA, sorry, VLAN 10 is also going down FA02. Now, there's a few other ways to verify that, and I want to show them to you because I think they're going to come up again in a minute. So we've done show in trunk, show VLAN brief, and show in status. Now I want to show you show int switch port. <clears throat> So if I just do show in switch port, it'll show you a bunch of information for all the ports. This is mostly too much information. What we want to do is limit it to the ports that we are concerned with. So if I do show int and then I give it an interface, let's say FA02, and now I do switch port, now it'll give us a bunch of information useful just to interface FA02. Now FA02 is the link that's going to the server. So if we were to talk through a few things that this command is telling us, it's given us an administrative mode. This is how the device is configured. It is currently configured as a static access port. If I did show run section interface, we'll see that port FA02 is configured as an access port in VLAN 10 which is the same thing that the command above it just, just gave us. So let's scroll back up. <clears throat> just below that, you'll see operational mode. Now, it might seem like operational mode and administrative mode is kind of showing you the same thing, but if you consider DTP or dynamic trunking protocol, this is why there's two different lines showing you different things. DTP might be in a particular administrative mode and the operational mode will be telling you what DTP or dynamic trunking protocol has negotiated to. This will come up in a moment. <clears throat> um, cool, and then the other things that I wanna show you is down in here. It is currently the access mode VLAN is 10. And since this is an access port, that is what's actually applying. Uh, and I want to show you that so I can show you the difference with FA01. Notice FA01, admin mode, trunk, operational mode, trunk, access mode, VLAN 1. What this means is that if this port becomes an access port, this is the VLAN that it's going to be in, in VLAN 1. So that's the difference between those two uh, lines. In any case, it seems like the VLAN transport through the switch is working pretty well. The proof of this, uh, Rather, there is a command you can use that can actually, you, where you're essentially you're asking the switch, hey, show me everywhere VLAN 10 goes. Uh, it's actually a very useful command, so I do want to make, make sure we bring attention to this. Uh, it actually takes advantage of spanning tree. So spanning tree is the protocol which you know, prevents, rather detects loops and, and smartly shuts down loops in your layer two network. Uh, but you can see where those BPDUs are going to essentially see where those VLANs uh, are going. Remember, Cisco devices do per VLAN spanning tree. So if I want to see everywhere that VLAN 10 is going from switch three's perspective, I can just do a show spanning tree VLAN 10. And it's telling me that VLAN 10 is going out FA01, which is this link right here towards switch two, and going to 
out FA02, which is this link right here towards the server, which means I know for a fact that VLAN 10 is definitely coming through this server to, to the other switch, which means if I'm trying to make sure there's connectivity on VLAN 10 this direction, I'm content with uh, what's happening at switch three. So let's jump onto switch two and take a look at what's going on. Uh, so just like before, I'm actually going to start with the spanning tree command. So show spanning tree VLAN 10, because that's the VLAN that I'm trying to make sure has transit all the way through. If I hit enter over here, cool. This right away tells us that something is wrong. It's telling us there is no spanning tree instance for uh, VLAN 10. Instantly, this tells me that likely VLAN 10 isn't configured on the switch. And if I do show VLAN brief, you can see that there is no entry for VLAN 10. So right there tells me one of the problems that might exist preventing VLAN 10 from coming through switch two. So I will type in VLAN 10. I don't have to give it a name. It's probably best practice if I do, but since this is just a packet tracer lab, I'm not gonna worry about it. Now we have a uh, entry in the VLAN database for VLAN 10. And now if I scroll, if I do the up arrow and do my same command, excuse me, show VLAN, show spanning tree VLAN 10, I can hit enter. This is telling me that spanning tree is going out both FA02 and FA01. If I do a show CDB neighbor, this tells me FA02 is switch three, which is the switch we just came from. And FA01 is switch one, which is the next switch in our list. So this right here is all I really need to know to know that VLAN 10 <coughs> is definitely going through switch three and is definitely going through switch two. Notice we did this without looking at whether switch three was configured via access ports or trunk ports or anything like that. We just use spanning tree to essentially tell us, hey, where, where else is this VLAN going? Um, so cool. So let's just validate a few things if I do show int trunk, this is indeed telling me that FA01 is a trunk port. Sorry, FA01 and FA02 are both trunk points, ports rather, uh, and nothing is limiting these VLANs from traversing the trunks. So we are content insofar as VLAN 10, or rather I feel content insofar as VLAN 10 going through switch two. There might be something else that comes up, but, in, but at where we're at now, I'm good with it. So let's now jump on switch one. And uh, again, since we're essentially trying to troubleshoot, is VLAN 10 allowed, or rather, is there a path through VLAN 10 between the server and the laptop? Let's again start with show VLAN, show spanning tree VLAN 10. Right away, we run into the same issue we had before. No spanning tree instance. Uh, we can confirm that this is telling us <coughs> Uh, there is no VLAN 10 created on the switch. So let's go ahead and create it. Make sure it actually got added to the VLAN database. Cool, we're good there. See where those spanning tree BPDUs are going. Looks like it's going out FA02, uh, which is as expected. This is going back towards switch two, but this does tell us it's not going, VLAN 10 is not going out FA01, which indicates where there might be another problem. And just to make sure it's not a spanning tree oddity, I like to do this command a couple times spaced out by time, just to make sure nothing is, is coming up or down or whatever the case. So let's take a look. So switch one, if I do show CDP neighbor, we're neighbors with switch two. Cool, that's expected. Uh, this, is an, this is an access point. This is a lightweight access point, so it might not actually show up in the neighbor table. It could just be acting essentially as a, uh, uh, as a silent uh, pass through, if you will, for what's connected via Wi-Fi. Uh, we'll find that out more clearly later on. And I say that to say, just because it's not showing up, it shows CDP neighbors, doesn't necessarily indicate there's a problem. If I do show VLAN brief, same command we did before, uh, you'll notice nothing is showing up over here. This tells us we don't have any access ports in VLAN 10. And if I do show int trunk, our only trunk port is FA02, which is the one that links back to switch two. So this um, this is indicating that the link towards the access point right here, FA01, is an access port, but it's not in VLAN 10. If I did show run um, section interface, 
we can see that interface FA01, which is the link towards the access point, is currently not showing anything configured. So it's at, the, it's at its default configuration. Uh, here is FA02 confirming that it is a trunk. Great. Now, now this is kind of interesting, and I think I want to bring back <clears throat> a command we looked at way in the beginning, show int switchboard for FA01. Uh, I want to show you these two lines again, because you, now you'll see that there's a difference. So notice, the admin mode is dynamic auto. That's the default admin mode for a configuration, rather for a uh, interface that has never been configured. Um, this is in indicating that this switch port is in DTP mode, dynamic auto. If you recall, dynamic auto is willing to become a trunk if the other side is a trunk or is in dynamic desirable mode, but dynamic auto won't initiate becoming a trunk. Uh, cool, so that's the admin mode, and this is telling you the device's configuration, not the port's operation. Those are different. This next line is actually telling us the operation. So it's telling us we are configured in dynamic auto, and DTP has uh, made this interface a static access port. So FA01 is currently an access port, and it's an access port in VLAN 1. <clears throat> which is actually kind of where our problem is going to be, because we want this laptop and anything connected into this Wi-Fi device to be connected via uh, through VLAN 10. So what we're going to have to do is uh, change the VLAN that this is a part of to be VLAN 10. Also, I'm not a fan of anything auto automatic. I like setting things explicitly, so we're also going to explicitly set this interface to a access port as well. So. Um, so let's go ahead and let's make sure we're not missing anything in the configuration. So this is the full configuration of FA01 before. I typically like to see the configuration of interfaces before I modify them, just in case I mess something up, or just to make sure I'm not missing something in my show commands when I was investigating. But it does indeed seem that FA01 is at its complete default state. So let's jump into interface FA01. And I'm going to make this an access port. And then I'm going to say, uh, you're going to access VLAN, we said 10. So if I come out of that, and then I take a look at my interface configuration again, you'll see this is now how, uh, uh, interesting, this applied right away, <clears throat> that this is now how FA01 is configured. If I look at my show int switch port, rather show int FA01 switch port command, again, we'll see that now the admin mode is access and the operational mode is access. Uh, but you'll notice this is what's different is that we are no longer in dynamic auto mode. Uh, and then down in here, we have access VLAN 10. That, that's where I told the switch to put this port in VLAN 10. Cool. Cool. So at this point, we can run our spanning tree command again to make sure, rather to verify where VLAN 10 is going from the perspective of switch one. If I enter over here, you'll see that now for sure, VLAN 10 is going out FA01 and FA02, and that is indeed both sides of the switch. So at this point, I feel pretty good in saying that VLAN 10 will work from the server through switch three, through switch two, through switch one, now let's just make sure that everything on this side is working as we as expected. So we'll jump over here to the laptop, um, and then we'll go into the wireless interface and check that out. <coughs> Already, it's pulled it's pulled a real address from the interface. Remember before, it was pulling that a PIP address, the the one six nine two five four address. So right now, since it's pulled a real address, this instantly tells me that there is connectivity from the server all the way to, rather from the laptop, I should have said, all the way to the server through VLAN 10. Now we can conf uh, confirm it <clears throat> by jumping on the command prompt and actually pinging the server. And here's actually the IP address of the server. I put that down because I've already forgotten the IP address of the server. Although I guess it's down here in Keith's instructions as well. 10, 6, 7, 8, 35. Cool, and it looks like we have successfully proved connectivity through VLAN 10 from the laptop to the server. Now the final test, the objective of the 
packet tracer exercise, if we go to, to Keith's instructions down here, was can we open the web page at this particular IP address, at the server's IP address? So to do that, we'll go again to the desktop of the server over here, and then we'll open up a web browser. And then in the URL bar, we'll type HTTP slash slash, and then the IP address 78335. And if this loads, which it just did, that proves success of this particular lab. Cool. Well, that's it. So we have taken care of everything in this particular lab. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we missed. I don't think so. Cool. So that's it. So that's how I would walk through this lab. Those are some of the commands I would use when I'm kind of jumping on a lab that I'm unfamiliar with. The main things I guess we, we picked out in this lab is understanding the difference between a device's configuration and a device's operation. <clears throat> and we showed you how you can pick that apart on switch ports by using the show int switch port command. Um, and then we also showed you the, I think the neatest trick from today is how you can use spanning tree to determine where BPDUs are going, which will tell you where particular VLANs are going. With that in mind, I'm going to turn it over to the chat. Does anybody have any questions over anything we went through today? Or does anyone want to verify or, or uh, you know, run any commands on these, on these devices? Definitely let me know in the chat right now. Cool. Awesome, Kevin. Awesome, Luis. Glad you enjoyed it. Noted, Callie. You can always come back to this, definitely. And if there's interest, I can also do uh, start a little higher level and essentially give you the basics of configuring a device and, and setting up a router and packet tracer and all that fun stuff. Awesome, Yoga. Thank you. Absolutely, Jonathan. So this is recorded. So the same link you're using to uh, watch the live stream will become the link to the recording, uh, I think, after YouTube processes it. So it might be in an hour, but, but it's the same link. <laughs> Christopher. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I think Christopher's answering John. Okay, sweet. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for joining. That's all, that's all I really had. Uh, again, in the description, I will have the links to Keith Barker's YouTube, sorry, Keith Barker's website, the keithbarker.com and Keith Barker's, that's where you can download the packet tracers. And then I'll also have uh, links to the two playlists I mentioned. So that is the Keith Barker lab walkthrough playlist. So if you want a second, uh, for those of you who are asking, if you want a second run through on this particular lab, definitely check out the correlating video and Keith Barker's video playlist where he runs through all of his labs. And then I'll also share the CCNA his CCNA master playlist. Again, Keith, Keith Barker is just a phenomenal individual. And one of my favorite things about Keith, um, he's incredibly passionate about the stuff he's teaching. Uh, and, and for having teaching it, for having teaching this stuff for as long as he has, for him to retain his passion and excitement for networking, that is huge. That's, that's how I can very safely say he is very much a legend in, in the uh, network training community. In any case, when you're studying for the CCNA, there's so much you have to run through, and some of that can get pretty tedious. Having an instructor that is excited about the technology and, and passionate about what they're teaching makes it a lot easier for you to continue struggling through the learning journey. So I, again, I cannot recommend Keith's content enough. Uh, he's awesome, uh, so definitely check out his content. Otherwise, the last thing I'll leave you guys with if you guys enjoyed this type of content, me running through labs, uh, this is the first one I'm going to do. We're doing another one Saturday morning. Uh, I also have two others that I'm planning to do for uh, the third and fourth iteration. And then the fifth iteration is actually a, a lab that I've built myself um, where you have to trouble, not really troubleshoot, you have to find the imposter or find the bad guy in a particular network that I've designed. So look forward to that. Um, if that type of stuff is interesting to you, then uh, definitely let me know in the comments or in, in the chat, preferably in the comments. Uh, and also, if you guys want to start providing your own labs for us to walk through together, uh, definitely let me know. So if you know of somebody else that's offering, uh, without violating any sort of copyright or anything like that, if you know somebody else that's, that's, that's offering free, uh, publicly accessible labs, uh, I'm happy to fire those up and walk through them together, answer questions, and you know show you tips and tricks from uh, just stuff I picked up doing doing network engineering for a long time. 
Uh, Synth, I'm not sure I understand your question about Vitella. But so feel free to re refresh in the chat. In any case, let me go back to this view over here. Cool. So that is all I had in store for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Feel free to mention more in the chat or the comments. I'll be around and I'll be responding to every comment. If you guys haven't yet, there is my Discord. Where is it? Right here. You can join my Discord. Maybe it's a little bit lower. Uh, feel free to join the Discord. Come say hello. Uh, if you have questions about networking or, or anything like that, I'm happy to help. Uh, Saturday, we're doing another one of these. That network is going to be a little bit more involved. It's going to involve routing uh, and switching and troubleshooting and a bunch of different things. There is... I don't think there's a link in the Discord, but if you look up my channel, you'll see it's uh, in the upcoming stream section. Otherwise, I think that's uh, that's all I had for you guys. Thank you for joining us on the stream. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And yeah, I guess we'll see you all in the next video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the Discord for the next 30 minutes, so feel free to head that direction. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll catch you all in the next one.